that is very similar. So this might be very similar to a frequency table, but we call it a relative frequency histogram. And if you recall, when we talked about relative frequency, we're talking about percentages and fractions and all that stuff. So I'm going to extend this to find the relative frequency of each um, class. I don't know if you remember how to do that. I do believe um, this was out of 31, right? So the sum of the frequencies was 31, which means we had 31 total data values. So how do I find the frequency of the first class? So I'm going to take uh, the relative frequency of the first class. <clears throat> so I'm going to take 2 out of 31 and change it to a, a percentage. So what did we say? 6.5-ish, rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent, 6.5% for my first relative frequency. 13 out of 31. My 41.9 rounded to the nearest tenth of a percent, 41.9 percent. So I'm using percents for my relative frequency here. Sometimes you're asked for um, decimals. I like percents. 32.3 percent approximately rounded. And then 3 out of 31 is 9.7-ish. So 9.7 percent and 9.7 percent. And then if I add up this column, I'm expecting it to add up to... 100, right? 100% because it should represent 100% of the, total of the um, classes. Um, class boundaries. So I said, you know, sometimes it's easier to take the class boundary between the upper class limit of the first class and the lower class limit of the second class. So between 65 and 66 is 65.5. And then keep going, 103.5, 141.5, 179.5. And then 217.5. And then, you know, the difference between each of these should be 38 because that's the class width. Um, so I could subtract 38 from here or imagine there was an upper class limit of this class that's not necessarily here. An imaginary class would be 27. So between 27 and 28 would be my um, lower class boundary of my first class. So I should have one, two, three, four, five, six class boundaries for a frequency table of five classes. Technically, this is a relative frequency table. Now, I want to create a relative frequency histogram. So, um, all right, so in the last, so, so same idea. It's going to be bars of equal width, not much of a difference in that, in that sense. They should not have any gaps. Um, the, the horizontal axis should be either class midpoints or class boundaries. So just to show you the difference between what it looks like when you use class midpoints, and class boundaries, in this case, I'll use class boundaries. And again, it represents the number of calls of whatever. Um, but the height here, because it's a relative frequency histogram, um, his, just for histogram, the height now represents relative frequency. And again, in this case, it's percentage. It could be um, decimals also, just depending on what's preferred. So my height has to at least be 9.7% and at most go up to 49, 41.9%. Uh, so um, ah, let's count by fives. 5%, 5 10%, 15. You can kind of make this up as you go. But because we use different scales, I want the height. Well, I usually, if we're doing it by hand, so I might need to extend this a little bit. Um, I like to show the height of each bar just for accuracy because otherwise you can't necessarily see it perfectly. Um, <clears throat> my class boundaries, let's label those. What I start with? 27.5, uh, 27 65.5, so 27.5, 65.5, 141, so 103.5. 141.5, so I'm just labeling my uh, relative frequency table, 179, 217, 179.5, and 217.5, class boundaries. Now here's the difference between um, using class midpoints and class boundaries. If these represented class midpoints, I wanted to show the middle of the bar. Since they're class boundaries, I'm starting the bar at the first lower class boundary and ending it at the second which would represent the upper class boundary of the first class. So this first bar represents the first class, starting here and ending there. 
So it's between those two values, right? They bound each class. They bound that first class. It has a percentage of 6.5%. So I'm going to go approximately here. Now, obviously, it's not perfect. That's why I like to label. Okay. My next um, is going up to 41.9%. Let me try to make a straight line. But it's obviously going to start here and end here. So, okay, so up to 41. So, like, approximately there. And approximately there. 41.9%, right? About up there. The next one, 32.3%. So it's starting at this and ending at the next, 32.3%. Never gonna be, it's never gonna be perfect. And it's gonna bother me. <laughs> here to here, 32.3%. And uh, what are the last two? 9.7, 9.7. So about here, 9.7% and 9.7%. And again, you know, my graph is not perfect, right? Because they're supposed to be equal with each of these bars, but the height represents the relative frequency. And, you know, if I say ND, is this graph normally distributed? I mean, it has the same shape as the other graph, doesn't it? Well, that's not a coincidence because it comes from the same set of data with the same number of classes in the table. It's just that instead of instead of having the amount frequency for each height, it actually has the percentage. So it's going to have the same kind of shape. So therefore, it's also not normally distributed and it's probably looking a little skewed to the right. Um, so this is what we call a relative frequency um, histogram, obviously coming from a relative frequency.